you like the content that you've seen so far, make sure that you go down to that little subscribe button and hit it and also hit the little bell right next to it. The little bell will let you know when I come out with more mind crushing knowledge for you. And no matter what, what really helps me are those likes and those comments. So take a moment to like it, either because you like the content or like my flannel shirt. And also take a moment to comment with your thoughts on the video once you've watched it, or if you have nothing constructive to say, go ahead and post whatever you'd like. So I've been seeing a lot of comments asking me to do some type of concealed carry holster video. So let's go ahead and do that. So in my normal methodical method, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about materials used for concealed carry holsters. We're gonna talk about different options for concealed carry, both inside and outside the waistband. We'll talk about belts and finally, a couple different holsters that I've used in my experiences generally with conceal carry. So full disclosure, um, as a part of my job, I don't conceal carry. It's not something that I do professionally, but rather as a citizen of the United States. So I know from my law enforcement officers that you may have some different ideas from what I have because I don't do it professionally. And I, don't, I likely don't have the kind of experience and knowledge levels that you have because one, I can't carry on base and I spend a lot of time on base and two, I can't carry when I'm on a field op or doing something else because then I'm either issued something or I'm just not able to due to the current laws that are um, imposed upon military members. So because of that, I only carry when I'm off base. So my time carrying is somewhat more limited than what a lot of you have. So take that with a grain of salt. Understand that I'm coming with my own perspective on things based on my experiences and yours might be different if you have um, concerns or comments about what's worked for you or you might do something different than me, go ahead and comment and let me know. Always interested to hear other opinions. So we're gonna delve into this and we're gonna go over materials, different carry options for inside the waistband and outside the waistband. We're gonna talk about belts and different types of holsters that I've had experiences with over my time concealed carrying for the last uh, nine or 10 years or so. So first off, materials. If you carry some type of pistol that has a safe action system, say a Glock, for example, where there is no manual safety, the safety is on the trigger itself, then I would caution you to stay away from all leather holsters. Because when leather gets wet, it has a tendency to warp. Now, if it warps at an inopportune location where it can then get into the trigger guard and discharge your weapon when you're reholstering, it's not going to be a good day, uh, depending on where you carry. You might put around through your leg, your butt, maybe your dick. And that's going to be a terrible day because there's nothing worse than losing your dick. For my 1911 guys, those leather holsters are going to work fine. Savor that victory because that's about the only thing that works well when it comes to 1911s. It's cold because it's true. Different carry techniques. Just kidding, I love John Moses Browning. Different carry techniques. We have inside the waistband and outside the waistband carry. I get a lot of questions saying, hey, should I do one or the other. So let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each. So first off, with inside the waistband carry, what's good about it? Well, first off, you're not going to print as much as outside the waistband carry. Two, you can keep your shirt untucked and just over it. So if you have a jacket on, that type of stuff, it's easier to layer down when you go inside. Now, con with your inside the waistband holsters is typically people need to buy a pant size up. Now that might be a pain for most people because I know you millennials are wearing those tight jeans because you gotta show off those skinny legs. Now compared to outside the waistband carry, it's gonna be a little bit harder to draw your weapon in comparison. Now it's still very quick. I do have a sub one second draw to shot time from inside the waistband. Nonetheless, it does keep, take more concentration to get that good draw rep, to get that good draw as opposed to outside the waistband carry. Within inside the waistband carry, one thing that's become very popular is appendix carry. Basically, appendix carry is when you're carrying anywhere from about the 11 o'clock position to around the 2 o'clock position, just about right in front there. I'm a big fan of appendix carry for a couple of reasons. One, it allows me to keep good accountability of my weapon. I find that the back of my shirt tends to ride up as I'm doing day-to-day -day activities, and because of that, sometimes my weapon might end up showing if I'm carrying from about the 3 o'clock position and back. Compare that to appendix carry where it just doesn't happen quite as much. Another reason I like the appendix carry is because my draw time from appendix carry is about sub one second, which is a lot faster than how I can draw from about the three o'clock position and back. Now it's not going to work for everybody. If you've got a little bit of extra material up front, it's gonna be very difficult. So again, 
Um, it's for you to decide. Make sure that you get a holster that is designed for appendix carry if you choose to append carry appendix. And as always, practice with it. You're not going to know if it works for you unless you try it out for a while and compare it to a lot of the other carry methods that I've mentioned previously. Now, when it comes to outside the waistband carry, a couple reasons you might choose outside the waistband carry is one, it's incredibly comfortable compared to inside the waistband carry. Two, um, if you've retired, you know, my law enforcement military guys, um, you've retired and you're enjoying the finer things in life like beer and steak, or for my Marines green crayons, then you might have a little bit of extra survival pudge going on. In that case, it might be a little bit harder to do an inside the waistband carry because it just might not be possible for you to easily access your weapon. In that case, outside the waistband carry might be a better option. Some cons to outside the waistband carry is that you need to keep your shirt tucked in to ensure that you can get that quick draw. Otherwise, you don't have a lot of the benefits that come with outside the waistband carry. Another problem with outside the waistband carry is that it's going to print a lot more than inside the waistband carry. And finally, if you have just a jacket over the outside the waistband holster and there's not good open carry laws in your state, it might not be possible for you to take off that jacket when you're traveling around and doing things. So might, you might swell a little bit and look a little awkward, but nothing's really changed much because most of you are awkward anyhow. All right, so we talked a little bit about the pros and cons of inside the waistband carry and outside the waistband carry. <laughs> just gotta love you guys. Um, so when it comes to belts, um, there's a couple good belts. Now, a lot of people kind of are taken aback. They don't think that they need a good belt to comfortably carry. And I'm sure a lot of people will say, well, I've carried um, with some random belt and it's been fine. Ain't hey, no doubt. But when you're moving to either a heavier weapon or you just want a more comfortable carry method, uh, a belt's really going to help you out. So I'm going to name off a couple of good belts right off the top of my head that I've used and I've liked. The uh, Magpul Tejas belt. Funny enough, it works great and I'm a big fan. It's basically a thick leather belt and leather tends to work very well for me when it comes to concealed carry. I find it to be very comfortable. Um, another great belt that you can get that's leather is the one from Relentless Tactical and they have like a concealed carry belt. It's like a super wide, super thick leather belt and it holds up guns great. So those are our leather belts. Um, you also have your tactical belts like your riggers belts and a couple good ones out there is you have the, the uh, Wilderness Instructor belt. I have one right here. This thing is has a five stitch mod to it. It's incredibly stiff and that helps hold up gun belts. You also have a concealed carry slash duty belt from Alonzo Defense Group. So those are a couple companies that have made some good belts. And I'm sure there, there are plenty others, DeSantis, whatever, but um, I don't have specific experience with them. But just find yourself a good holster that has good reviews and you're gonna do fine when it comes to that. So we've talked a little bit about some of the methodology that goes behind concealed carry. Let's go ahead and talk about a couple different types of holsters. So we're gonna talk about inside the waistband holsters. The first one that we'll talk about is the Alien Gear holsters. So a lot of people have been asking me about these and they do work. They have a great warranty and it's very easy to switch out these little Kydex plates or plastic plates, whatever they are, and put in a new one that can, they get, that can then fit a whole nother gun. So that it is cool. Now that being said, the backing is a flexible type material. And for me personally, I like my Glocks or other weapons along those lines to have a completely enclosed trigger with Kydex or plastic to ensure it's completely protected. Now I know people, a lot of people carry with these holsters on Glocks, but personally I prefer something that's a little more uh, rigid around the trigger. Nonetheless, these are good holsters for other types of weapons and I will without hesitation recommend them for those types of weapons. Another holster that we have for inside the waistband carry is the Raven Concealment Vanguard 3. So what's cool about the Raven Concealment Vanguard 3 is that rather than being molded to a gun, it's molded to your thought detector. So if you got your gun with your little thought detector right here, it will plug right into that. And in this case, my Glock 19 right here is rocking an X300U from Surefire. So it's a cool little design. Because of that, it's very universal. You just switch out your light and it will then index off of most weapons with that light mounted. Cool little design. They also have the Vanguard 2, which, index, which indexes off of the trigger guard only. But I'm a big fan of having a weapon light on a concealed carry weapon because it might be dark when you're having to employ that weapon. So I think it's a good idea to have a thought detector. In any case, you have the Vanguard 3. Now, one thing to be aware of with the Vanguard 3 is that 
because there's nothing covering the sights, if you have a weapon with extra tall sights, say suppressor height or taller to co-witness through your optic or for whatever reason, then those sights can become snagged on clothing during the draw. Now, I found that with normal Glock sights or sights that are the height of normal Glock sights like Trigicon HDs or something like that, that there's no problems. Just something to be aware of when you're using this holster. But I am a big fan of it. It's very low profile, very minimalistic, very sexy. And by sexy, I'm thinking, I'm meaning like, like Daniel Craig, um, like Sex Panther oiled up, like a sexy Jaguar type of thing. All right, moving from the Raven Concealment Holster, we have one of my favorites, which is the G-Code Heliostrategic Made Incog. So what's cool about the Incog is that it's minimalistic, it's a simple design, tension holster, and these little clips that get onto your belt do a really good job of pressing it into your body to ensure that you're not going to print as much. Another thing I like about it is this little tactical fuzz on the outside. That fuzz helps keep that holster from shifting because it gives a little bit of traction against your clothing. Really good design. I found that the draw from the G-Code is bar none. I haven't found another holster that draws um, as smoothly as the G-Code Incogs. So I'm a big fan of them. But for those of you guys who are rocking your thought detectors, you're gonna need something that's compatible with them. So in this case, we have the G-Code Incog Shadow Eclipse. And this one will fit your guns with thought detectors. These will work with suppressor height sights, so you won't have any problems there. Another thing is that because they're completely encompassed during the draw, they're not gonna get caught on any type of clothing and any of that type of thing. It makes for a very smooth draw. Another nice thing is that it's easy to reholster. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, for training, it's a big deal, and also for my law enforcement guys, where you might have to draw this thing and then reholster it when you're going hands-on, that type of thing. So, different things to think about depending on what you do. All right, so we've gone through our inside the waistband concealed carry holsters. Now there's a lot of manufacturers out there. A couple ones that I don't have examples of here, but are still excellent, um, but are still excellent holsters are Bravo Concealment, LAS Concealment, um, Galco, DeSantis, a couple of those. Depending on your type of weapon, one of those might work better than the others. Just take your time, do some reviews, and you'll find one that works well for you. All right, when it comes to outside the waistband carry, guys, um, I don't do a whole lot of outside the waistband carry. Again, a couple of companies that make some good outside the waistband holsters. You're gonna have Raven Concealment, Bravo Concealment, many other Kydex manufacturers. And then, of course, you have Galco. Um, in this case, I have a Galco convertible outside the waistband or inside the waistband holster, and I just keep it in the outside the waistband configuration. Uh, it is well made. Uh, not a whole lot to say on the outside the waistband holsters if you choose to carry in that method, just be aware of the pros and cons when it comes to it. So guys, we've talked a little bit about holsters. Hope you learned something. Take some time, find one that works for you. And no matter what, because you can't really show off your holsters or your gun, you know, do the best you can to look cool. Every man should have a nice suit. So in this case, I'll say have a nice suit. I'm talking like Daniel Craig, um, just sex Jaguar type, you know, where he's just built. It's awesome.